PLO style. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't really want to talk about this, but uh, you know the nature of social media is even when you try to stay away from the bullshit um, because of how social media monetizes bullshit, um, it comes to you. Maybe I'm part of the bullshit and I'm not coming to you. So, <laughs> I, all right. So, I got the PLO style instrumental running. Um, you know why I'm actually playing this beat in particular? This is one of the first rap records I ever remember hearing with a friend of mine back in my Saudi days, okay? Palestinian guy, shout out to him. He was my best friend in high school. So, and I know he got into rap. In fact, it was like me and him were like the only people in our uh, school at the time. I think they even liked rap. I remember the other Arab kids calling it monkey music and all that shit, but that's beside the point. <laughs> um, but he, my boy, was attracted to rap because I guess rap was kind of rebellious. And he was Palestinian and, you know, Method Man, Wu-Tang, who are respected, had made this song called PLO Style. And, um, you know, so it's, it's just interesting to see. I think black folk is, uh, we've always been intertwined anyways with um you know, expressing freedom and trying to help those who are oppressed be free. I mean, this is literally our story as black folk. Uh, now, what I really want to get at here is not so much what you think about the sort of Israel-Palestine thing, because honestly, it's a rabbit hole that I have no real patience to you know dive into. But um, the part for me that I do want to talk about is um, our like the black perspective on it, if that makes sense. Or more importantly, why I feel like there's so many black pawns out here in this sort of global propaganda war game, uh, chess game, and it's kind of getting annoying now. You know, when I see my black friends, uh, you know, and thought leaders who are so quick to talk about Israel and Palestine, and I'm looking at them going like, man, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, I'm, I'm literally shocked at how little these people know, yet they have the platforms to, spe you know, spread hate and disinformation. And um, I'm an outsider in, in the Israel-Palestine war, but I will say this. I actually lived in Saudi Arabia. My best friend in high school is Palestinian, right? My best friend over the last couple, you know, not, several years is Israeli. So, I and not like... Like, I know their families, I, you know, like these are people that um, I know fairly intimately um, and the stories behind it. And again, and I'm still an outsider and I'm still someone with so little knowledge in comparison to the grand scheme of things, because it is a very, very long conflict. It's gone on for a very, very long time. But someone in my position, I'm even hesitant to just sort of give my opinion on it. Meanwhile... I see people who are born and raised in Brooklyn or <laughs> born and raised in Toronto who have never left Brooklyn, who have never left Toronto, who are trying to tell me that Israel is evil or that Palestine is evil or whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, you don't know shit. <laughs> you're literally talking about something you don't understand and you're fanning the flames like an idiot. And fanning the flames in social media is part of the problem because you're essentially helping to contribute to more hate and more hate, you know, inspires people on both sides to do hateful shit, right? So the whole thing is if you're a responsible global citizen, you don't want to ideally be spreading hate. Um, but unfortunately, in this era, especially with social media, hate so easy to spread. And it's all engagement. So that's why you're going to see trolls say this, say this, say that. Um, most of it won't be true or it'll be a skewed version of the truth, which is even worse. So a, a, a truthful thing, but it'll be like vastly interpreted as something that's not true at all. So anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. And I'm going to be brief about this because I saw Mark Lamont Hill's name. Um, I guess I'm, I'm not even subscribed to The Breakfast Club. This is what I'm trying to tell you. But as a hip-hop person, because I'm into hip-hop, I see a notification, Mark Lamont Hill has an interview on The Breakfast Club, and he's going to talk about Israel, Arab, you know, Israel Hamas. Again, I'm thinking to myself, why does Mark Lamont Hill, like, even want to talk about this shit, really? You know, 
we are African, we're black, okay, in the grand scheme of things. Nigeria just had a crazy election, like, months ago, that is highly contested. The largest populated country in Africa has ha is going through a terrible time right now, right? Where are the black leaders talking about this shit, okay? Do you even have an opinion on this stuff? No. You're going to shill for Israel, or you're going to shill for Palestine, Haran, whatever, and I'm thinking to myself, like, why are some of our black leaders so happy to be pawns in a game that they don't even understand? And frankly, they have no real stakes in. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, right? I hate to <laughs> hate to break it to you. But even if you think that, for example, the Jews don't like you or you're afraid of the Jews, the Jews don't like black people. Well, surprise, the Arabs don't like you either. <laughs> surprise. Okay. Like, <laughs> you have no stake in the game. So stop being used and stop being so happy to get used, right? Now, you can have an opinion if you so choose and it comes from a place that's hopefully not hateful, but to just be so happy to spread misinformation or to, you know, be like, this side is evil and all that stuff, it's like, but why, right? <sighs> what I want to say, I'm, I'm trying to tiptoe the line here because I honestly don't really want to go into this whole who's right, who's wrong shit. I really don't. Um, I mean, honestly, obviously, I'm not a fan of Hamas at all. They are literally a terrorist organization. I'll say that much. So that shit is like, and anybody to me that's excusing that shit to me is like insane. You know what I'm saying? I think you can absolutely criticize Israel in general. Israel is not above criticism, right? Um, and, you know, at the same time, I can understand that Israel has multiple enemies that are not just Palestine. In fact, it hasn't been about just Palestine for decades. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, right? Like, they have real enemies around the world. So, what I'm trying to say is, I don't want to get into, who you know, who's right, who's wrong. Because that's, that's, again, not what I care about. Hamas is evil. Best believe that shit. We're not even in... <laughs> We're not going to tiptoe around them being a terrorist organization. Like, that, that, that's, that's a fact, okay? But um, the point of this is, again, at the end of the day, I'm not here to fight someone else's fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way I look at it is I will support. I try to lead with love, you know, and, and I say that to all my peoples. You know what I'm saying? I consider myself a world person, a world citizen, right? I have friends, very close friends of mine who are Arab. I have very close friends of mine who are Israeli. Um, you know, it's, it's, I would help. I'm the kind of person that if you need something from me, I got you, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of where I stand or all that stuff. But the point is I don't lead with hate. And I think this is the real issue that I have with a fair amount of these people, like even acquaintances of mine who are posting stuff, talking about, you know, free Palestine or this, that. And I'm going like, you don't understand anything about this conflict. You, you don't know people intimately that have lived this shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't even, you've never lived in the Middle East. You haven't lived in Israel. You haven't lived in Palestine. You haven't even lived in Iran or Saudi Arabia. Like, you don't know these things, right? When you live there, like I live there, there are certain things you start to really understand about, A, like, um, you know, the state of how, let's say, other Arabs view Palestinians in particular. How, anti, how deep anti-Semitism really goes. That's something that a lot of people can't really fathom, right? So it's like you're giving these opinions on something that you have no understanding about, but you're happy to just point someone as this person's evil or that person's evil. And again, I say this, this is both sides. There are people on the Israeli side that say terrible, terrible things and fan the flames against Palestinians. And there are people obviously who are on the Palestinian side of things who say terrible, terrible things and, fly, and fan the flames against Israeli Jews in general. And again, a lot of these people are living, you know, they're, they're typing away from the comfort of their fucking keyboard and they don't know shit about it and they're just trolling. And why are they trolling? They're trolling because whatever side they choose um, as a side that they want to hate, it's an easy proxy for them. It's an easy sort of um, person that, you know, it's this bully that maybe they never confronted in real life. You know, but it's an easy thing to hate. They, they have hate in their heart, right, over something in their life. And this villain is the perfect person or the perfect thing to, like, let that hate out. And I think that's the disappointing part. 
the acquaintances of mine who I've seen who have posted stuff, um, m many of it, especially now in the wake of this at attack, that to me, I'm just like, man, this shit is, some of the stuff you're saying is vile. Like, are you kidding me? Every one of them. And then these are just acquaintances of mine. They're not friends of mine. I mean, I don't know them deeply like that. But again, you know, I'm on social media. They're on social media. I've met them in person maybe once or twice. They share their lives and all that stuff. Every one of these people that I somewhat know in this case, they all have deep personal problems, you know? And, you know, every now and then, because they'll, they'll say it on social media. They're dealing with, you know, a, a, you know a, an abusive relationship uh, or um, health issues or things like that. And again, there's nothing bad about that stuff. I mean, and what I mean is you're human. Humans are dealing with all the all kinds of things, right? Um, and it's unfortunate, but that's just how life is. What I am trying to say, though, is like, don't use that excuse because of the fact that you're dealing with something uh, like an abusive relationship, which is in your power to solve, hopefully. Um, and instead of you dealing with that shit square on and dealing with your own issues and how you may have contributed to that. No, you want to like take that hate, internalize it and then turn around and, you know, troll about you know the israeli palestinian conflict something you don't understand right that's the part to me that's a little bit sad and and that's what i kind of see with some of these black thought leaders you know like aside from them sort of internalizing using their hate and just flipping it into some other shit it's like you you don't understand enough about the situation to really give an opinion and frankly it's not your fight I hate to say it. I mean, you can offer support on some level if your opinion is asked. Um, but it's, you know, there are other fights. There are fights that we as black folk are fighting, whether it be in the United States, in other parts of the world, African countries. And y'all not talking about it. You, will, you won't even like raise any awareness about the shit. But you'll be more than happy to shill for Israel or to shill for Palestine. See, that that's that's the corny shit to me. Right. Anyway, I say all that. I'm going to sign off. Um, maybe the last thing I'll talk about real briefly is where does all the, you know, sometimes a lot of the support, and I would argue a fair amount of the, you know, black, maybe even hip hop sort of support. It's mixed. I'm sure some of it comes from, you know, that tends to be more sort of pro-Palestinian. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with obviously the sort of Islamic 5% influence in hip hop. I think some of that is there. Um, Method Man had that song, PLO style. Um, and not to say that Method Man himself put PLO on the map. That's not really essentially what I'm saying. But what I am trying to say is that, you know, growing up, I'm assuming, especially I've talked to people who lived in Brooklyn. Growing up, they grew up around Arabs, right? Um, particularly maybe the Arabs who owned the bodegas and that kind of thing, right? So they were able to kind of see them, right, more regularly, right? They would go into the shops. And this is what, you know, friends of mine who were born and raised in New York tell me. You go into a shop, you see, you know, the guy who's running the shop, some, some you know, some Arab dude. And they got pictures of them, you know, of the PLO on, you know put up on the wall or whatever you know now that you know you don't see that no more after 9 11 that shit really disappeared obviously but you see pictures of them on the wall and you're like oh what's that about oh it's it's the plo and then they're fighting for their freedom and you go oh, okay right and so what i'm trying to say is a i know that that's where method man was coming at it from because he literally was saying when he made the song plo style that it was because he just thought it was fly to a certain degree that these are people fighting for their freedom. They got the guns out. I mean, Wu-Tang is some gangster revolutionary shit, right? So, of course, they're going to make a song about that. It doesn't mean that Method Man himself is saying that I am pro-Palestinian and, you know, it's all about, you know, free Palestine and fuck Israel. That's not what Method Man is saying, right? And I'm pretty sure if you ask Method Man's opinion, he may have a, he may say that, but he may have a completely different opinion that you're not expecting. But the point is that there is that relationship between black folk and I think to a certain degree, like at least in New York, um, of some of these Arabs that live in the same areas and communities as them, right? And I have to say as somebody who lived in New York, I wasn't living in New York for very, very long, but I did live in New York for some years. And, you know, my local bodega was run by some Arab dude and they were cool. You know what I mean? I think the dude was from Yemen or something like that. I don't remember. Right? And they're always pretty cool people, all things considered. So... I can understand that. And it's not like, 
I mean, again, you could say, told you you're wrong, you're buggy, you don't know what you're talking about in this case, but you know, living in Prospect Heights, for example, it's not like I walked into like my regular everyday shop and, and saw a Jewish person, you know what I'm saying? And was and hanging out, having a conversation. And that Jewish person seemed to be like on my level, if that makes sense, you know, as a, um, as a dude just living in the, you know, not in the hood, but just as a regular working class or certain level, do you know what I'm saying? And I think that's part of the perception. Like there is a perception that uh, Jews are these sort of wealthy overlords and, uh, you know, and a lot of that obviously is, it's a little fugazi. There's some, there's, there's a bit of truth and there's a little bit of fugaziness and, and anti-Semitism all mixed in, in there. But what I'm trying to say is that historically Jews who were living in ghettos um, in a lot of places in the world, whether it be in Toronto here, uh, Kensington Market, or probably in parts of Brooklyn, um, they started out there, but they kind of moved on to other places, right? So I can understand to a certain degree, maybe as a black person, you're living in, you know, your your neighborhood, and you don't really see Jewish people at the bodega um, in a in a working class kind of way. So there is a sentiment that you're like, oh, these people are just like they live on Wall Street and they they just run the world, and I, you know, and they can't relate to me, and they're keeping me poor, right? Whereas the Arab dude is here who's working a bodega trying to just, you know, rub two cents together to make a dollar, right? So I'm going to be more sympathetic to him because I see him, right? And he seems to be on my level. And I get that. But I am saying, though, at the end of the day, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is some complex ass shit, man. It is way more complex than people give it credit for. And they often get very reductive and say it's this evil person, this bully versus, you know, this victim, um, both sides play victim a lot of times, um, and people reduce it to this very like small Israel-Palestine thing, which is very frustrating because for me, I'm looking at going like, this is not accurate. Um, it's way bigger than that. There's a lot of other countries at play, um, and there's a lot of political and financial advantages to having the conflict to continue, right? And so why would you want to fan the flames if, if you... I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you're a person of peace, um, like I am, I'm somebody that I think wants people to be happy. I don't want to hear about anybody being killed and on any level. So I think to myself, okay, let me not fan the flames, right? Let's come with love. But so many people I find on the internet, especially, they're just so happy to, to send all this troll shit. And, um, you know... At first, it just was sort of, in my opinion, troll stuff coming from whether it be the Israeli side of things or the Arab side of things. But now I'm seeing it coming from like people, you know, in my community. And I'm going like, the fuck? Like, you have an opinion on this shit and you don't even understand the shit? Where's the outrage for, you know, stuff that's happening in Nigeria or the Congo or wherever or South Africa or something like that, right? Like, where are the conversations going to be on revolt, you know what I mean? Or on BT about that stuff to create a greater black awareness. Nah, you want to go shill for Palestine. You want to go shill for Israel. Stop it. You know what I mean? Anyway, peace and love, y'all. One.